Welcome to Power Kids. This is a weekly show on TV, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on Kingdom Broadcasting Network. And we're so glad you tuned in. Make sure you tune in every chance you get because we're going to show you how you can be powerful, how you can be power kids. We get our power from the Holy Ghost, from Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you today and we thank you for the precious children and adults that are watching us today. We thank you that you're moving in their lives and you're showing them how they can be powerful. The word of God that goes forth today is going into good soil, into good ground, and it is going to grow. Devil, you can't steal it away from them. They are blessed. They cannot be cursed and they are powerful Thank you, Father, for this day. It's a day you made, and we are going to rejoice in it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I'm Mary Stringer, and this is Pauline Larson, and we're glad you've tuned in today. Well, first of all, we're going to learn about rules. You say, rules? Seriously? I have that at home in school. I hate rules. But you know what? We have rules because it'll help us learn. And the first one is stay seated. You say, well, I'm in my own home. You can't tell me what to do. No, but if you want to learn something, you've got to stay seated and continue to watch. Second rule is do not come on the stage unless asked. Now, I want to mention, first of all, you say, I'm a long ways away, and how can I come up on your stage? I mean, that's kind of a little bit much. Well, you, we welcome you to our studio audience, and even though you're watching it and we're using the word pretend, you're welcome to come be part of this audience. At the end of the show, we'll have some information. If you want to come and join us, we'd love to have you. We will have prizes and games and all kinds of fun things that we can do that, uh, if you come. But in the meantime, we're going to... Um, Continue, and we're going to use the word pretend. All right, third, the whistle means quiet, and even if you come, you'll get an opportunity to yell. And we want to see who can yell louder, the boys or the girls. Of course, I happen to think that the girls are better looking than the boys, but if we come and we're going to have you yell as loud as you can, and you can do that at home too. Of course, your mom might say, you're not supposed to yell in here. And you say, that lady told me I could. So you can put the blame on us. But at the count of three, I'm going to blow the whistle. And the whistle means quiet. Because we want to see how you can be quiet. Because you know what? If you're talking even to each other, you're not going to learn anything. You're going to miss something that might change your life or help change somebody else's life. So at the count of three, I'm going to count and I'm going to blow this whistle. I want you to be as quiet as you can be. All right. One, two, three. I think they are. All right. Now, the fourth one rule, and it's a rule, is you must have fun. I don't know. Did they say? I want you to say it with me. You must have fun. All right. Let's see. You must have fun. Right. All right. This is the rules. Stay seated. Do not come on the stage unless asked, and the whistle means quiet, and you must have fun. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do the pledge to the American flag. And we do this because we want to honor our country. Amen. Okay. I think everybody knows the Pledge of Allegiance. We pledge to the flag, but for what it stands, the United States of America. Amen. So take your hand. Put it over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we're going to do the pledge to the Christian flag because we want to honor our Savior. All right, everybody stand up, hands on your heart. You say, I don't have a heart. I don't know where my heart is. Well, put it over on the left side of your chest like this and say, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, 
and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the four things that we learn about, you know, about God and particularly what it means to be a Christian. Somebody says to you, what's being, what's Christian all about anyway? Is it a bunch of rules? Got to go to church, got to do this, got to, well, we can sum it up. You can sum it up in four sentences. First of all, God loves me and he loves you. You might say, well, I don't know if anybody really loves me. God loves you and he's for you. Secondly, I have sinned. Oh yeah, I get in trouble a lot. Everybody thinks that's all I do is get in trouble. Well, I got news for you. Even those people who are mad at you because you got in trouble, they always got in trouble too. Everybody needed a Savior. Jesus had to come die on that cross, which is the third thing, because everybody had sinned. And the only way to be right with God was for someone to pay the price. Because the thing is, in the garden, and originally when it happened, when Adam and Eve sinned, man was separated from God. And Jesus died on the cross, made a way for man to be back and be in good fellowship and be in the family of God again. And the fourth thing is, I must decide to live for him. You must decide to live for him. You know, if Jesus died for you and paid that price, and then you want to live like the devil, (laughs) do all kinds of bad things, that's not pleasing to God. And when you tell people you're Christian, it's not a good witness. And because... People will say, yeah, look at them. They say they're a Christian. They lie, steal, and cheat, and all kinds of things. No, you have to make a decision to live for him. And when you're tempted, when you've got friends that want you to go do something, you know in your heart, because you've got that bad feeling in there that it isn't good. I shouldn't do that. Then say to yourself, would Jesus do that? And if he wouldn't, then don't you do that. You have to make a commitment. I love God. He died for me, and I'm going to live for him. All right, next. We have a visitor. He's going to come and say the memory verse. Okay, say hello, Eugene. Hello, Eugene. No, you don't say hello to yourself. Oh, sorry. Say hello to the kids in TV land. Hi, kids. <laughs> They're power kids. Hi, power kids. Okay, would you please say the memory verse? The memory verse. No, you know better than that. Oh, it's Isaiah. You say what? <laughs> Isaiah. He's a prophet. Oh, I say, uh, 263. No, that's 26, 3. Isaiah 26, 3. I say, uh, 26, 3. And would you please read what it says? You will keep in. Pepperoni pizza. No, that's not what it says. It says perfect peace. I like pizza. That's not what, this is not a cooking show. We're not talking about pizza. God likes pizza. How do you know God likes pizza? Because he likes me. Okay, Eugene, that's enough about pizza. You will keep in perfect peace. Oh, you will keep in perfect peace. Who? All who trust in you. In who? You. No, in God. That's who it's talking about. God will keep in perfect peace, not pizza. (laughs) Okay. All who trust in him, in God. All righty. What's the rest of it? All whose thoughts are fixed on glue. No. (laughs) Fixed on you. Who, me? No, God, you can, well, that's a good idea. Glue yourself to God, but it's fixed on God. Oh, fixed on you, God. So are you going to fix your thoughts on God? Yeah. Okay, would you please say the memory verse correctly this time? Do I have to? Yes. I say a 26-3, you will keep in perfect peace. Back up here. Oh, all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you, God. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) Say goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye, Eugene. No. (laughs) 
Now we're power kids, and so we have a PowerPoint. And the PowerPoint is Jesus will calm the storm or calm you in the storm. You know, there's all kinds of storms. You could say, oh, man, there's a real hurricane out there. Yeah, that's a storm. Or a tornado. Sometimes tornadoes just tear up neighborhoods. And, or maybe there, you live in an area where it snows and there's a blizzard. And, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's bad. And it's, or silver thaw where things where it's dangerous to go out. There's all kinds of storms. But there are other storms, too. A storm could be your family's going through a divorce. A storm could be you're failing school. And you're not, you know, your grades are terrible. Or you've got to take that test that means that you're going to be able to go on to the next grade or not. And if you don't pass it, even though you've got good grades, you can't go on. That's a storm. Or it could be a storm. It could be you have a pet and it's sick. Or maybe you're sick. Maybe you have to have surgery. Or maybe your mother or dad or a family member is really, really sick. Or maybe somebody has died in the family. And those are all storms. A storm could be when you have somebody who's bullying you and you're afraid to even go to school and, or that you feel like you know, nobody likes you and you're all alone. That's a type of a storm. But Jesus will either help calm and give peace to that storm or he'll help you have peace inside that storm. Speaking of storms, the Bible talks about a storm at sea. Amen. The disciples were, were with Jesus, and they were by the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus said, let's go to the other side. He planned on going from the shore, one shore, to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, to the other shore. And Sure, Jesus, we'll go anywhere with you. So they were going to go with Jesus across the Sea of Galilee. Well, it was a beautiful day. It was very nice. They get in the boat, and guess what happens? Um, the clouds start getting dark, lightning and thunder. There was a wind and it was really loud. It was like, <laughs> I mean, they were scared. The waves were as high as the sides of the boat and water was filling up the boat. And they were afraid that they were going to drown, that it was going to, the boat was going to turn over. It was going to sink and they were going to drown. Guess what Jesus was doing? He was sleeping. He was asleep through all of this. And they were like thinking, man, how can Jesus sleep through all of this storm, this terrible weather, you know? Well, Jesus knew that they were going to, he said, let's go over to the other side. And he knew that they were going to go over to the other side safely. So they, you know, decided, well, do we wake him up? Why isn't he waking up from all this noise? Mm. The rain, you know, surely, you know, the rain hitting his face is going to wake him up. <laughs> so finally they went over there and they woke up Jesus. And Jesus was like, okay. And, you know, they were like, Master, don't you care about us? We're going to drown. And he said, why do you have so little faith in me? Because he told them. We're going over to the other side. So what happened to their faith? Their faith was not there in Jesus, was it? Their faith, they were looking at the circumstance. We do that a lot as humans, don't we? We look at the storm. We don't look at who's in our boat. So Jesus, all he did, he didn't, you know, get up and say, Oh my gosh, why didn't you wake me up sooner? This is terrible. There's, there's terrible rain clouds all over and, you know, the thunder and lightning. This is unbelievable. No, Jesus didn't do that. He said, Peace, be still. He used his authority. He used his power. And you, as power kids, you have power and authority too. You say, can I command the wind and rain to stop? Why not? Jesus did, and we're supposed to be like Jesus. Amen? He did. He commanded the rain to stop. The wind stopped. The sea was perfectly calm. The clouds split. It was blue sky. It was beautiful weather. And the disciples were like, wow. Even the clouds and the rain and the sea obey Jesus. Amen. He's the creator of the universe. Do you think the creator of the universe knows how to solve your problems? He knows how to solve everyone's problem. Amen. 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 <clears throat> you know, speaking of problems, 
sometimes people don't know how to handle their problems. And this could maybe be one of your parents or a sister or brother or, or anybody, you know. When you don't know Jesus or when you don't know how to call out on Jesus and trust him, sometimes people will go to use alcohol and drink and they'll do things to drown their troubles. It's like, let me just kill the pain that I feel. Or maybe, like for instance, they'll use uh, cigarettes or like marijuana or different things. And they'll use things that are, you know, shoot up or take pills. Anything that'll make them feel better. Sometimes people eat too much. And they'll go eat what we call comfort food. And all it does is postpone things. It doesn't solve anything. It just actually down the road makes for a bigger problem. Because if you drink and you have a problem with alcohol, you can become a, you know, get a DUI or you can you do things you don't remember what you did and all kinds of things can happen. Sometimes people want to gamble or do things. It's a way of trying to escape. But if you'll look to Jesus, he'll either calm that storm or he'll give you the peace to deal with the storm and to come through it. Amen. A lot of times there'll be people who um, will say mean things to you. You know, again, they're using their tongue in the wrong way. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Let's, let's make sure that we speak life to people to so that they feel good so that about themselves, so that they learn to love Jesus more because they see lo love in us. Because sometimes people, you know, they will um, say negative things, and it hurts. You know, there's a saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, words w do hurt, but you have power over those words. You have power over other people's negative words. Like maybe... Um, one good thing to do is when people say negative things to you, you know, I've seen on TV where they stick their fingers in their ear, la, 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 la. Well, that doesn't help much. You know, it just drowns out a little bit of what they say. But when they're saying negative things or when you're hearing negative things on the news or you read it on Facebook, how many yeah. people get on Facebook or you see it on TV, there's some negative cartoons out there. You know, tune in to God. You can talk to God. You don't have to have a phone. You can talk to God personally. You tune in to God or you just listen to praise music. When the, when the others go on, you turn them down and you turn up the praise. Jesus, I love you so much. Jesus, I praise you. I thank you. This is the day that you made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus, 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 you are the lover of my soul. You're my strong tower. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. You're my all in all. You know, if you remind yourself of that, it won't matter what they're saying because God is not a man that he should lie. What they're saying is lies. If you want to know the truth, you go to God's word. You read God's word. You listen to praise music. And it makes a big difference. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you a story about a family. You know, in Houston, we have a lot of rain. We have hurricanes, like Hurricane Ike this last year, where the water rose, the bayous overflowed. And uh, this particular family, it started raining and it flooded. And <coughs> the, um, the children watched the water rise, and they were on the first floor, and then <coughs> they got on the second floor, and then finally they had to get on the roof. And they were throwing everything they had in boxes and, and taking their most valuable things to the top of the roof. And they were waiting for rescue. And, of course, they were praying. In one of the boxes, they had put, their dog had had puppies. And they put the puppies in the box. And they got the puppies. They were waiting on rescue. And they were praying. <coughs> in the meantime, here comes the rescue boat. And, oh, praise the Lord, the, the rescue boat has come and we're safe. Well, they were until one of the puppies jumped out and went and jumped into the water. The little puppy could hardly swim, and it was struggling to stay afloat. And they kid, the kids were just distraught. And so finally they said to the, the they, by then everybody was in the rescue boat, and they said to the rescue, please do something. They were crying. Oh, our puppy's going to drown. Can't you save it? Can't you do something? 
And the rescue worker said, look, I would love to, but right now I'm trying to save you. The water's continuing to rise. There's only so much in, with this boat and the currents are rough and uh, we'll get you to safety and then maybe we'll think about the dog. But right now we'll just have to believe the little puppy will be okay. But you know what? The father made a decision. He was going to save the puppy. So he jumped right into the water. And you know, that's just like Jesus. He saw that, that after the fall in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned and, and all was lost and man was separated from God, he decided, I need to go save those people. So he came to earth and he died on a cross because when in Adam and Eve sinned, they weren't right with God. They couldn't have fellowship with him and spend time with God and live with God. And you know what? There's a real heaven and there's a real hell. And after this life, you go to one place or the other. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, there is a real hell, and it's a terrible place. But the good news is when you know Jesus, you can be saved. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But in the meantime, here's the Father. He's going out. He's risking his life. But he's going to go, and he's going to rescue this puppy. Sure enough, he gets a hold of the puppy, and the puppy seems to know that he's trying to rescue him, and he kind of quits struggling and calms down, and Father finally finds a floating barrel and grabs a hold of it. And then he begins to swim, begins to swim toward the shore, even though the currents are really rough, and, the, and his family's praying, he makes it to the shore. And there they are. They're so happy and they're so glad. And you know what? The storm is still raging. It's still raining and the, and the water still, it's still a problem. And their house got flooded and wet. And oh, that's a problem because even after the water goes down, your house, once it's wet, you got to tear out sheetrock and furniture, things get ruined. And so they still had a storm in their life. But you know what? They were so happy. They were safe and they were alive. And that's the thing. Jesus can give you peace in the midst of the storm. And they had this kind of confident knowing that they were going to be all right and everything was going to be all right. And that's one of the things when we know Jesus, we know that. But maybe you say to me, well, I don't know. If I died tonight, would you go to heaven? Ask yourself that. Would you go to heaven? And you say, well, how can I know if I'm going to go to heaven? Well, you can know. The Bible says all have sinned and fall, come short of the glory of God. And the Bible also says whosoever calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. Well, you're a whosoever, right? Well, of course you are. So you can be saved. And what you need to do, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10, is that you need to believe that uh, Jesus died and that God raised Jesus from the dead. You need to believe with your heart, and you also need to say it with your mouth. We've talked about the tongue, but the tongue gives you power to be saved. The tongue gives you creative ability. It isn't so much just saying nice things. It's also saying the word of God, because that has power to change your circumstances. No matter how bad things are around you, you can speak the things you want to have happen, and you have creative force with your words. Of course, if you speak things like, well, I just never, every year I get a cold. Well, guess what? What? You're going to get it because you just said you were going to get it. And there's life and death in the power of the tongue. But if you say good things like, I'm going to be a success. I'm going to live for God. You know what? Your words have creative ability. But let's right now, let's, let's uh, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior if you haven't. Or maybe you have and you're sitting there watching this. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I went to church, gave me heart. But I don't know about now. Well, you know what? You can rededicate. You can also, and your parents, your adults, if you're listening to this. It's not just for the kids. It's for everybody. If you'll say this prayer and, and say this confession with me, then you can be assured that when you leave this earth, that you will be with Jesus and you'll be able to live in heaven. So let's say this together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I do believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe it with my heart, and I'm saying it with my mouth. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm a whosoever. I'm calling on your name, so I know I'm saved. Now, if you just accepted Jesus, we would like to hear from you. There'll be information at the end of the show where you can contact us. We'd like to send you a gift. But you know something else? When Jesus died for you, he didn't just make a way for you to go to heaven. He also provided for healing. If you need healing in your body, 
put your hand on whatever part, you know, if it's your face or if it's your, if you've got a sore arm or, or whatever, sore stomach, put your hand on right now and we're going to agree with you that God will touch you right now, right where you're at and you'll receive healing. And so you can, you can lay hands and pray for the sick too because you've got that power in you because you're a power kid and because you know Jesus and because it says they shall lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So let's just believe right now. We thank you, Father, that um, people are being, kids are being healed and adults are being healed. Maybe you want to re- put, lay a hand on your mom or dad or somebody if they're sick or your sister or brother or somebody if they're fighting some kind of sickness and God will heal them. Because he loves us and he doesn't want any of us to be sick. He doesn't get any glory if someone's sick. He doesn't get glory in that at all. And you say, uh, well, not that it's wrong, go to the doctor. God uses doctors. But God wants us well and he wants us healthy. Now, Amen. go ahead if you would. Solamente necesitas confesar y creer para ser salvo. Amen. Porque la Biblia dice que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y crees en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, serás salvo. Amén. Porque con el corazón se crea para salvación, para justicia, pero con la boca se confiesa para salvación. Vamos a orar. Señor Jesús, creo en ti. Eres el Hijo de Dios. Amén. Pagaste el precio por mis pecados al ser crucificado. Creo en tu sacrificio de amor. Me arrepiento de todos mis pecados y te pido perdón. Gracias, Jesús, por perdonarme y darme la vida eterna. Amén. Si has recibido a Jesucristo, queremos saber que mandes una carta a nosotros y vamos a mandarte un premio, un regalo.